What I'm making today are these gorgeous tags. So I've got three of them here, a small, a medium and a large. So stay tuned and I'll take you through the making of these. Hello everyone, it's Lee here from Lee's Art Studio. I'm here for another uh, episode or instalment of the Can You Say Napkins Challenge. This is an open collaboration that's been run by Sue, Joanne and Cherie. The task today is to add a napkin to a tag or pocket. So I'm going to make a couple of tags. So I've got some index card that I've stained with a little bit of my fake avocado dye. The paper I made. I don't know if you can see it, it's got a bit of a pattern on it because I put a, do a dolly on top of it when it was drying and that's the pattern it left on there. And a few napkins. I'm firstly going to glue some of this pink paper onto the onto the um, cards because I don't want lines on both sides. How's everybody going? Hope you're all doing well. It's unbelievably hot here today. I don't know what the temperature is but I've got the air conditioner on and um, I opened the door before to let the dog inside and the heat just about knocked me over. Just been watching a little bit of the cricket that's happening. I, it's at the Gabba, I believe, and the, the, the players are getting a bit knocked around by it. And then on the other side of the world, it's snowing. So this is another collaboration slash challenge that Julie from Art and Junk Journals with Julie put me onto. So once again, I have to thank Julie. I'll leave a link to Julie's channel in the information box, which is up there on the right. Uh, yes, she does some beautiful work and she's also doing the challenge. And uh, we're going to do a collaboration of some sort a bit later on, probably in February, somewhere along there, which will be nice. The way I make this faux avocado dye is I make a, like a jug of tea usually put about six tea bags into a litre of water and I then get pink food colouring and drop that in a little bit at a time until I get it to the, the colour I like. It isn't always a guarantee because it depends on the paper that you're dyeing uh, and the way that you dry it, how dark the paper actually turns out. But I was quite pleased with it because I've tried to avocado dye. I've watched so many different videos with all these different ideas about how to do it. And mine always turns out brown. I can never get it to be pink. And pink is one of my favourite colours. So I'm always very disappointed, you know, after saving all the avocado pips and the, the seeds, uh, the skins and everything, and then you get nothing in return. So um, I thought I'm going to try an experiment and a little bit of cheating. I'm hoping that my camera battery lasts through this one and doesn't conk out like it has been. Oh, it's nice there. Eh? Uh, can you, is it going to focus? Yeah, you just see it looks like a bit like a mandala. It's actually plastic, plastic uh, table runner that I got from Spotlight. So now I want to decorate these. So I'm going to start off with the big one. So this is a scrap from the other day so I'm gonna just put that on there that looks nice even. I love that that's a nice one beautiful colors on it. So I'm just gonna use glue stick to stick that on. It's always a challenge to get these on straight. I 
one looks pretty nice already. Alright, I've got a little text stamp. I want to put some text over that, just a little touch. I don't want too much. I want to keep it fairly simple and let the uh, actual uh, napkin be the focal point. Press a little bit harder. Okay, I've got a couple of button clusters that I made. Might stick one of them on somewhere, maybe. I don't think the colour goes very well on those ones. This one's got a little bit of black in it, maybe that. So I might keep this one a bit simple. And what have I got? Got some butterflies. I grabbed a handful of uh, little bits of ephemera before I came into the room to start filming this. And I have here some little cards that came out of a Tim Holtz packet of mini field notes, I think it is. Uh, I don't want anything that's too bright. That one looks quite nice. That one's got some, like an old document of some sort on it. Like that. And I think a bit of ribbon would be nice on there too, somewhere. Not sure where. All right, okay, what can, else can we put on that? It's a little soap label from Graphics Fairy. I'm using the Stays On ink and the color's called uh, Ganache. It's a really, really dark brown, I love it. It was the very first ink that I ever bought when I started doing this. And I just found a little piece of this lace. So I'm thinking that I might pop a bit of that on there as well. So if I glue that on there, pop that one on there. No, I don't like the colour of that. Definitely that. What else? Need to find something else. I'm going to use a piece of this as well. Okay, just tear that off. Get rid of that corner. Don't like corners. Just quickly ink these bits. Okay, so I'm going like that and like that. Put the lace on there. Pop the little document like that. And then the butterfly on there. Yep, that'll do. So I'll turn it upside down. Hopefully I won't forget where everything goes if I let do it that way. If you are um, one of my existing subscribers and you haven't had a look at Julie's channel, um, do yourself a favour if you're into art journaling and collage. She does lots of it. She's very good at it and I'm sure she'd love it if you went over and watched one of her videos. Give her a thumbs up and 
subscribe. If you, if you do, let her know that, you, that I sent you there so she knows where you've found out about her. That wall's quite thick under there, but it doesn't matter. It's not quite the way I had it before, but it's the way it's going to be. I might have to stitch that on there. I'm just going to go to my sewing machine and stitch that down. Alrighty, I'm back. So that's what it looks like. I've went, I stitched all the way around the outside. So that's the back of it, writing side. Um, it's just got a, that little rectangle stitched in the middle where I stitched down the little text card. Just going to put the butterfly on there. Right there, I think. Blue stick will do for him. Oh, should have put the lid on it. <laughs> uh, this is why I leave all these mistakes in my videos so everyone knows what not to do. Do not leave your little glue stick uncovered in a room with a fan going in it because it will be hard when you come back. Okay, so that's that done. Now I need to draw his little antenna on. Antennae, there you go. One there, one there, one there. And might round the corners on that. I should have done it before I sewed it, but anyway. Give that a little bit more ink. The paper was cut. One thing I love when you actually sew around the edge is, is leaving just these little bits on of thread on. It looks so cute. And Shana from um, Shinuki Art, she often does these uh, thread tangles where she pulls out the thread from the sewing machine, like lifts the foot, pulls the thread out and then puts whatever she's sewing back under and then scrunches it up and then sews over it and they look so nice. I reckon that needs just a little bit, oh, if I do that on here I'll wreck it. And a piece of ribbon, ribbon or sari. It's funny when you get these saris that come from India, there are different colours that are in there so that's actually got, it varies from pink to brown as it goes along. And there's also that. No, that doesn't suit. That would be all right. Actually, I'm gonna put a bow on it. So I'll pop that on there. And I'll just put a little bit of um, jute. There we have it, that's the first one done. So it's completely covered in the napkin and I've made a cluster with the pink paper, the music sheet, a bit of lace, a bit of ephemera and a butterfly. Put a ribbon on it and a bit of jute. And these ones I'm going to cut the corners off. I decide not to use that small tag because my beautiful flower won't fit onto it. So I've got another index card out. I've glued the backing paper of the napkin onto the index card and, um, and I've glued it so that it's nice and wrinkly with lots of texture on it. So that'll be my background. Now I'm gluing the flower on there. I think about putting some other ribbon on it but changed my mind. I didn't think the colour was quite right.
I thought I wanted to put that whole piece of peacock feather on there but I ended up ripping it in half and just stuck the one little piece of it on just in that white area there. And now I'm looking at the bits of pieces that I want to glue on there but I don't want to cover up the flower. I'm trying to make everything smaller so it'll fit on without covering that flower up. I'm thinking about that butterfly and one of these little button clusters. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I do know that uh, it needs stiffening up so now I'm attaching that second piece of paper to the back of it. I think it's a piece of mixed media paper so it is a little bit um, stronger than the actual index card. We'll take this off to the sewing machine and stitch around it with a zigzag stitch. So I'm cutting a smallish piece of lace to go on there and trying to work out what else I want to put on top of the lace. So the, I like the, la the button cluster on there and I like the butterfly somewhere. Alrighty, back again. So I used the zigzag, zigzag stitch to go around this one. I did one of those little thread clusters that I was telling you about there. I'll go on that first. That's and that. And then the butterfly. This is great glue for this type of work. It's very similar to Fabri-Tac. I, it, I got it from Spotlight. So this bottle, which is a 500 mil one, was about $24. And it lasts for a long time. So we've got that down there. Put a bit of ribbon in there. Hang on to it for a little while until it sets. I'll try not to glue my fingers to it. And the butterfly. I'm actually thinking I'll put there. I was going to put it on the other side, but it changed my mind. Put a bit of sari silk through this one. I'm going to tear it down the middle. It's quite wide, it's about an inch and a half wide. So I want it to be nice and thin. This one I'm going to tie in a bow. There's that one. Blank on the back. It's still a little bit soggy from the glue, but that will dry out soon. And number three, I used this paper also on the um, when I did the dress. But I, after I when I when I glued the girl's dress down, I actually put it over the head of the bird accidentally. I didn't, I didn't notice for ages. <laughs> I might leave that as the back. That one. How much of the bird do I want? Oh. Get the bird but you sacrifice the uh, the butterfly. This paper just curls as soon as the glue hits it really. So there's this butterfly here which I want to preserve. Can you tell that I like butterflies? <laughs> I love butterflies. 
They just add a little magic to everything that you do, I think. A couple of months ago, we were um, invaded by butterflies. We sat out the front and watched them. They were all heading in the same direction and there was thousands of them and they were blue. And they were all coming from the south and heading north. Amazing. I've never, I'd never seen anything like it before. So we've got that so far. And, <coughs> excuse me, I want a flower to put on there, but I don't want a big one. Maybe I should just use this. Yep. It's off the same uh, napkin, so it has to, it has to fit in with the scheme. Glue. There we go, Mr. Glue Stick. I'm just going to wrap that around there because I can. Let's put the nice little touch on the back of it. Okay, this one doesn't want too much because I think it's quite, quite fussy as it is. Don't feel the need to put another butterfly on there. But I would like to just stick a label or something. So I've got this little one. I'll pop that on a little bit of text on there. There already was some on the napkin but I like to add a little bit more. So I put that about there. Cut a strip of lace off and um, stick that along the bottom so it hangs over. I'm not going to sew around this one. I'll leave it natural. I want that to hang down off the edge. Oh, I'll just tuck my thumb and pop that on there. I'll use this glue because it's going over the top of the lace. Just off center a little bit. That one. It's actually a specimen card, that. Well, that's what it says on it, specimen. And I'm going to cut a piece of this lace and use it as the little dangly thing on the top. Gly thing on the top. Or tie it in a bow. Uh, what shall I do? What shall I do? Tie it in a bow, I think. Try again. I wonder, I might just rip a little circle out of a piece of this and stick the, I mean, when I say circle, I do mean that in the loosest way, something that resembles a circle, sort of. Clear that there and then put the ribbon on top. back on. That ribbon's got, that lace has got a little bit of a mark on it, but it doesn't matter. Blob of glue. Uh, fine nylon lace in particular. I really need a fair bit of glue to get it to stick. So that looks like that. And I'm putting through the top of this one. Probably another piece of sari silk. Seems a shame not to use that 
little flower. It doesn't really fit. The colour isn't quite right. So I'm going to split this down the middle so it's a quarter of its original thickness by the time I do this. Maybe not. Must be really old fabric. Try it from the other end. I need to just start a bit bigger, the bigger cut. Nope, it's not going to tear. Oh, maybe it is. Yep, I'll do. So that bit or oh, that bit. This one, I think. Oops, knock my ribbon off. I need something to poke that through. With. Come on. Oh yeah, there you go. Alrighty, so that's tag number three. This is the three tags I've made. Well, there's my three tags. Aren't they gorgeous? I, I love, I love ribbon and lace. And one of my favorite crafters is uh, Laurie from Girl on the Ridge. She does beautiful torn pages, grungy stuff and combines the grunge with pink and lace and uh, just works so well together. So here's my, my small, medium and large tag, all made with a napkin. And don't forget to check out the other ladies who are taking part in this collaboration. I'll put a link to the, all their channels in my video description box. Don't forget also to pop on over and have a look at uh, Julie's channel. She has some beautiful work over there. Give her a big thumbs up, subscribe and let her know that I sent, her, I sent you. So that's a close up of that one with the bird on. It's got the lace at the bottom made a bow with the lace and I've got the ribbon and we've got this big one here with this gorgeous flower just love that got my little butterfly there lace and button cluster stitch around the edge of that one with um, zigzag stitch it's got some sari ribbon there and the first one I did was this is oblong one and I've stitched around with a straight stitch on this one. Got a little bit of a um, collage happening there with some purple wool underneath and a pink ribbon and a bit of jute. And they've all got their little, their um, little blank on the back for writing. That one I just deliberately left that turned over. I love that. Alrighty, thank you again for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up leave a comment and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. I'll see you in the next video, which is the Marguerite Miller challenge.